Hi, this is Ren. This is Casey. And this is All Walks of Film. So, <sighs> MoviePass continues to change their plan over and over again. For the worst every time. Yeah. Um, and it's, <laughs> at this point, it's it's just really disrespectful to your consumers, the people who are actually paying. I mean, not really. You're borrowing a shit ton of money, but we're the ones who are actually giving you money that's supposed to go into your business. Without us, your product wouldn't exist. Yeah. And it's not cool that you can't be transparent, that you can't actually talk to your cons- consumers, you can't come up with like a basic fair idea of what changes will actually help your product, and you're going to read off an email you got from MoviePass. I have not received any email. Yeah, I got this email today, and I I did send them a message on Twitter, and I don't know if this correlates with anything, but I basically said, hey, MoviePass, you know, are you going to write an email, you know, selling us what the actual changes are, or am I going to have to hear about this from third-party sources constantly? Because that's what I've been doing. You know, I haven't been hearing from MoviePass. I've been hearing, like, oh, The Hollywood Reporter says this, oh, CNN says this, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I haven't been hearing from, like, actual movie pass. And then I go onto their Twitter and they're just like, hey, you know, showing memes from, like, old school or whatever. Like, we we still got it. But they, they don't talk about, like, their actual changes. And, like, even this, um, you know, it wasn't until uh, after a couple hours and I was at work and I, I looked down and I was like, oh, um, wow, uh, movie pass changed. And... Uh, You know, I was looking at uh, CNN, and I was like, okay, well, that sucks. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to go over that. But first of all, I'm going to read the email that I got, because, you know, I'm going to let MoviePass say it in their own words uh, before I, you know, look at what other people have been saying. All right, so after getting an email, what was it, a couple days ago now? You know, where they, they talked about, like, we're, we're holding together. I, it was sometime in the last week. I think it was, like, Thursday or something. I think it was Thursday. Yeah, uh, they, they gave us an email, and they were just like, hey, we're, we're, we're going through some tough times, and, like, hold with us and all this kind of stuff. But, like, they were really vague and everything. This one's a little bit more descriptive. Dear MoviePass member, on August 15th, 2018, we will hit the one-year anniversary of MoviePass's revolutionary price point of $9.95 a month. We've experienced tremendous growth, and we know that at times, the frequent changes to our service have been frustrating to you. But through it all, one thing is clear. We've gotten people excited about going to the movies again. When your frickin' app works. Over the last year, we've tried different things and we've discovered what our members love about our service. The low price point and the ability to go more than 91% of theaters nationwide. We've also learned what people don't like about the service. Features including peak pricing and ticket verification. Features! Features like peak pricing. Features like peak pricing, which you implemented for a day until your site, like your product just about combusted because you didn't know how to actually use a concept like peak pricing correctly. Peak pricing does not apply to every screening to be peak pricing. Yeah, and when you're promoting independent movies, you don't say like, oh, wow, this is like peak pricing. When... A, the movie theater's not full, and the only thing that you do is hurt that independent movie because people just go, well, I don't want to pay that extra money to go see that movie. Mm-hmm. You know, especially the people who get movie pass and, you know, they watch the blockbusters and then they're like, oh, well, I've already seen the blockbusters. Now I'm going to go watch some independent films because I can. So now, with almost a full year of learnings under our belt... We're introducing a new pricing plan that retains the features you love the most and removes the ones you don't. Most importantly, this new plan will ensure that we can run a sustainable business and continue providing you with an amazing deal to go see movies in the theaters. Everyone said that what they loved about MoviePass were three things. Any movie, anywhere... 
any day, nine ninety five a month. They only mentioned two of those things. They mentioned the theaters, and they mentioned the price. They didn't mention the any movie part, and they didn't mention the any day part. Here are the details. Under our new plan, MoviePass members will be able to see up to three standard movies a month for nine ninety. Three. That's a tenth of what it is now. That's a tenth of what it is now. Presuming I'd rather that pay the fifth, correctly. I'd rather pay fourteen ninety five and you know have the same service with peak pricing over this. Three. You went from thirty to thirty one available screenings a month. Presuming that it works, to three for the same price. Yeah. Three. So everyone's going to have to decide that they're just going to see Marvel, Star Wars, and DC. That's what that means. And December is going to really suck. Because, you know, then people are just going to watch the biggest movie in December. And, like, all the award season movies are only going to go for... This, you know, only the cinephiles are going to go for that. Yeah, you're literally signing the death warrant for the entire independent movie business. Yeah. And be given up to a $5 discount on any additional movie tickets purchased. Today, 85% of MoviePass members go to three movies or less per month. So, the changes cater to the majority of our movie-going community. I call bullshit. That's, that's, you know. I call bullshit. That model is like, you know, like I've continued to say about the gym membership. Movie Pass is sort of like a gym membership, but for movies. And that's like saying, oh, well, um, since most gym members don't go to the gym all that much in a month, we're, we're just going to limit the times for you to go to the gym to three days a month. I, I know that we offered originally that you could come in at any time and use our facilities, but now you only have three days that you can. But, but that's how much you use on average anyway. That's not what you pay for. Yeah. It's a membership that is not what you pay for. Exactly. And yeah, there are some times where, you know, I only see like one or two movies in a month. And then there are times where you probably see at least, like, 15 in a month. Yeah, because, you know, it, like, I have free time or I'm I'm just really trying to power through some stuff. Or, like, there's just a lot of good movies. Yeah. The new plan will include many major studio first-run films. However, there will be some exceptions. Note that theaters with e-ticketing will include all movies and showtimes with no restrictions. That's great. If you're near one of the, like, three e-ticketing theaters in the country, that's awesome, maybe. I mean, we're really lucky. We're about 20 minutes away from about 20 minutes by car. Yeah, um, and yesterday we saw Christopher Robin with our movie e pass. Yeah, and the yeah, e-ticket e -ticket. theater is, like, actually pretty nice. But... Most people, even in major metropolitan cities, aren't near any theater that has e-ticketing. I saw somebody say that they lived in uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. No, San Diego? San Diego. They lived in San Diego, and they were nowhere near any kind of e-ticketing theater. Yeah, when I was in Chicago, you know, since I had a car, there was, like, one e-ticketing theater, but I never went to it because, like... I didn't have to. And, like, yeah, there is, are perks of using an e-ticket theater because, like, it's a little bit nicer and, like, you get to choose your seats and all that kind of stuff. But, like, it's... And MoviePass knows that you're not trying to abuse the system with that. But, like, at the same time... So, MoviePass is trying to, like, split the difference... Where it's like, okay, so you can go to 91% of theaters and go to three movies a month for free and then start paying essentially what they were trying to implement with the peak pricing. The peak pricing is just any movie after three movies. Or you can go to an e-ticket theater if it exists near you 
And hypothetically, the idea is like, oh, well, you can go as many times as you want if you go to an e-ticket theater, except for the fact that there aren't that many movies at the e-ticket theater. Like the one we went to has five screenings. It shows five movies and they're all mainstream, like super mainstream movies. The reason why we weren't ever going to the e-ticketing movie theater until that was the only way to use movie pass at all is because we were going to the other movie theater that actually, it only had eight screenings, like eight screens on it, but they were playing all the movies we were actually trying to watch. They were playing, sorry to bother you. They were playing blind spotting. They were playing uh, the King, which we want to see, but haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, they were playing three identical strangers. They're playing uh, eighth grade. They're playing, uh, won't you be my neighbor? Um, they were playing RBG when that was still in theaters. They're going to be playing the, um, McQueen documentary that's coming out. They're playing Generation Wealth um, now that that's out. Those are the movies we use Movie Pass to go watch. Except for the fact that now we can't watch all of those movies. We can only watch three of them a month. Good luck with that. When the app works at all. Because none of this is addressing the big elephant in the room, which is that the app doesn't work anymore. It hasn't been functional for a while. Like for a couple of weeks. It hasn't been working. Like, it's been a daily thing of looking at MoviePass. Oh, hey, is MoviePass showing any screenings today? No screenings at any theater. Oh, hey, is MoviePass showing screenings today? Oh, yeah, the earliest screening that's available is 9.20 or 10 o'clock. Hmm, I wonder if I look at my MoviePass at 8.30, if that late night screening's still going to be there. Oh, no, look at that. No more screenings. Yeah, and... And there have been times that I've heard about people, you know, essentially saying online that they drove to the movie theater. They looked on their app. Oh, hey, this movie is showing at this time. Okay, I'm going to drive to the movie theater. I'm going to go see the movie with movie pass. Then they get to the theater. Oh, no more movies showing. No, it doesn't work. No, yeah, it and doesn't work. And that's the problem with the fact that you're showing the screen times, which is a good feature. And you have to be within a certain radius of the theater in order to be able to preserve your ticket. Unless you very specifically, like, go at 7 o'clock in the morning before you go to work and you check in and you buy your, your movie ticket and then you go and get on with your day and then you come back later, there's no function. And that's assuming that on that particular day the app is even showing you those late night screenings because most of the time it doesn't even do that. What the fuck is the point of having a movie pass anymore? Like, at this point, dealing with all of these problems of the app not working and the app not working and the app not working, the idea of like, oh, well, you can get three free movies and possibly save $15 a month isn't worth that $15 a month saving. Yeah, and it was way more than that in saving when it was nine ninety five for unlimited movies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I it was math. one movie a day, which... You know, so You're it wasn't not, like completely yeah. unlimited. You can't but do like, double features, but like in the past ten months, Movie Pass saved me four hundred dollars in movie theater screenings. Yeah, this bullshit of oh, you only see three movies a month. No, fuck you. You don't get to dictate my schedule. Fuck that. No, no. We will be suspending peak pricing and ticket verification requirements for all members in the new plan described above. Whoop de do. You shouldn't have been doing I mean like the ticket verification wasn't that big of a deal, but like whoop de do, you got your heads out of your asses and realize that you're not doing the thing that you should never have been doing. Like Oh my god, you're so beautiful and brave for not doing your piece of shit peak pricing that didn't function. But but honestly Wow But on Wow, such a maze. <laughs> But honestly, I, I would have been okay with peak pricing versus like, uh, you know, three movies a fucking month. I'm not at all okay with peak pricing. The peak pricing idea was bad to begin with, but they had no algorithm. They had no way of verifying where to apply the peak pricing. Yeah, so they just applied on everything because they're like, oh, hey, we're running out of money. Oh, fuck. That. Let's so fuck no. over the customers. So no, I definitely am not willing to pay for any part of a movie pass that includes peak pricing. It doesn't matter if there's a peak pricing involved. It's that subscription is going out the window. But I'm not gonna give you your fucking brownie points for doing that. 
Oh, we're not going to do that anymore, you guys. Yeah, you bet your ass you're not going to do that anymore. We don't want you to. Over the coming days, MoviePass members with a monthly subscription renewing on or after August 15th will be given the option in the MoviePass app to transition to the new plan. Quarterly and annual subscribers will not be impacted until their renewal date. That's shitty. I don't even know. That's super shitty. Yeah, so all the month-to-month people got screwed over. Yeah, and guess what? Most of the people are the month-to-month people because we all knew this was going to happen. Yeah, so... We all knew that there was going to be a point where the startup was going to go to shit, and we wanted the option to back out. Because... But what Let's face mean? it. You movie can opt pa- into your new plan. What if I don't want to opt into your new plan? What does that mean? That means no movie pass. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. It's not like oh, well, you can do our new plan, or you can continue with what you currently have. Dude, you were fine a month ago. Yeah. And okay, so you need to borrow more money to maintain a sustainable business. I understand making some decisions preserve your business but you don't cut it to a fraction of what it is and not expect customers to be angry well it's super obvious what you need to do you need to sell part of your platform to movie studios for ad space which you should have already been doing it looks like but also you needed to not do any of these things you needed to look at your budget and write one single email with one plan, one change to your business plan that says, hey guys, we really like providing you with our service. Our service has all of these advantages. You get to see all of these movies and you get to have all of this freedom and we like providing that to you because we like helping the movie industry. But in order to sustain our current model that has been working, we need to up the subscription rate from $10 a month to $12 a month or $15 a month. That's fine. Um, we understand that this is a little bit of an inconvenience, uh, but we would like to outline how, you know, you're still getting the better deal and you're going to keep the same service that you already like. That's all you needed to do. That's all you needed to do. You do that once. You do that once. Most of the people are understanding and it's fine. I know there are some people who weren't okay with like keeping their Netflix subscription from like $7 a month to $9 a month and you didn't want that to happen again. But A, that's because there were so many fucking problems with Netflix and their stupid American library. And B, the fallout from that is fucking peanuts compared to all of this havoc that you have wrought on your own fucking product. Yeah, because going from unlimited movies to three movies, you think people aren't going to back the fuck out of it? Yeah, you think that people Oh, you think 85% the- you think 85% of people are like, "Oh, hey, you know, only three movies a month, you know? That that that's fine." You know, uh, yeah, granted there are people who only have time to see that many a month, but there might be one month where they want to see more and they can't because you just changed the plan on them. And here's the other reason why this really, 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 really is a nail in the... Like, this is really fucking over the independent movies. Big blockbuster movies will stay around for a long time no matter what. If you have to, if you've used your three free movies that month, and you have to wait until next month to watch... Avengers Infinity War, or Wonder Woman, or Black Panther, or Incredibles 2, that's going to be fine. You can wait from this month to next month to do that. But people aren't going to do that because they want to see it like right when it comes out. No, but if you have to, if it's like, oh, hey, it's, you know, the middle of July, I've seen my three movies. Oh, well, I can wait until the middle of August. Movies like... Sorry to bother you. And like Boots, uh, Boots Riley actually put out a post recently where he was like, Hey guys, just so you're aware, um, the way that our group, like the way that it functions is every weekend there's an evaluation of how many people are seeing our movie. And that determines whether or not we're still going to be in theaters next weekend. That plug could get pulled at any time. 
You can't wait from now until next month to see Sorry to Bother You. That's not an option. You can't do that. And let's face it. I personally think that Sorry to Bother You suffered because of this shit going on with movie pass. And there's no way Blind Spotting didn't suffer massively because they're so like publicly tied to movie pass. Yeah. There's no way people are like, oh yeah, that piece of shit movie, that movie that's all over movie pass. I'm not gonna see that. Irregardless of the movie itself. They're just gonna be like, oh look at these stupid people, you know, who are who are uh propping up movie pass and movie pass won't even let me see their movie. Well I'm sure as fuck not gonna see their movie now. That's dumb. The truth is, disruption and innovation require staying flexible and having an open mind. We genuinely strive to offer you a service that is a great deal, and we believe that the new plan we're introducing will be attractive to the majority of our members. No! Why do you believe that? Why do you believe that? You are going to get screwed up. Like, no your Twitter is going to blow up even more oh. now. Like, oh, man. Uh, you do realize that Movie Pass class action is trending on Twitter, right? Are you guys not aware? Are you not aware of how many people are just like, Movie Pass, Movie Pass, fuck Movie Pass, Movie Pass fail, Movie Pass class action lawsuit, Movie Pass cancellation? Oh, but look at you, entitled person. Why, why do you think that you should have free movies? Because you gave me that already, because that's what I paid for. And here's the thing. If Movie Pass was a feature in which there was no money going into the movie theater and back to the studio and back to the content creators, I probably wouldn't use it. Mm-hmm. But that being said, if it wasn't for Movie Pass, I wouldn't have that money to spend to go support those content creators anyway. That's the fucking truth of the matter. If it wasn't for Movie Pass, it's not like I had all of this money sitting around that I could have spent that extra $400 that I saved. Well, and to be perfectly honest, I'm somebody who can't afford to go out and party. I, I just can't. I can't go to bars. I can't go to, um, you know, concerts. I can't go to plays and all that kind of stuff. Because quite frankly, I don't make enough money to do that sort of thing. And movie pass was you're a like a human being living in America. Yeah, exactly. I'm a human being living in America and I'm, you know, working in a system that favors a certain group of people and screws over everybody else. And movie pass was sort of my com I mean movie pass was my comfort because I knew that there was one constant. Like I wouldn't you be You could always a- go to the movies. Yeah. And and let's be let's be honest. What's the way that we normally spend time with our friends? We go to the movies because with Movie Pass, that's the activity we can afford. Yeah, and let's face it, now with these new measures that they're taking, more people are going to stay at home and, you know, be more exclusive with streaming services than they ever have before. Mm-hmm. I noticed one, one of our... Uh, uh, one of the people on our channel said that, uh, you know, people are going to resort to piracy like they haven't for a long time. And I agree, you know, when people want to see new movies, you know, for the longest time, oh, I can't afford to go see this movie. So what do I do? I pirate it. You know, yeah, you can say what you will about like, oh, piracy and all that kind of stuff. But people are still going to do it because they want to see the movie. Also, you have critics and all these people talking about movies, and they spoil the shit out of it. So people try their hardest to get to the movies as soon as they can so that some fucker online doesn't spoil it for them. It happens on Facebook, it happens on Twitter, and it happens even in with person. the critics that you pay to talk about movies. Whoa. Oh, there now. Calm down. Yes. Paid critics definitely spoil the shit out of movies. Facebook, social media definitely spoil the shit out of it. Going to work can spoil the shit out of a movie you haven't seen yet. Going to a coffee shop and overhearing a conversation by entirely separate people from you can spoil whatever TV show, movie, yada yada. And that does suck. That's a big part of the reason why Movie Pass has blown up is because everyone wants to be part of the cultural conversation. Which is cool. But we're getting to a point where we're at the edge. Movie Pass is spiraling out of control 
everything with the internet is kind of going up in smokes right now. There's not a whole lot that we can do in terms of, like, entertainment, unless you're very specifically a board game kind of nerd or something like that, because everything else requires a shit ton of money. You can't really do reading, because even if you reach it electronically, that costs money. Like, you know, oh, well, I have a Kindle. Yeah, how much do you spend per book or per comic or whatever? Um, and usually it's the same for. prices, and sometimes it's even more expensive yeah, it's for like, the Kindle. Yeah, we're getting books. to a point where it's like, what can people afford? People can afford their Netflix subscription, and they can afford their free library card. Done. That's it. Yeah, and, like, let's face it. Last year was one of the worst years in cinema-going history in terms of, like, box office. Okay. I was like, what um, the fuck are you talking about? No, 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 no. Movies. No, no, yeah, no. I I, I'm talking about theater turnout. And MoviePass did actually start to change that. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do know that a big problem that they had was their investors. You know, it, it's all about investors. And I, quite frankly, I don't understand all the, you know, stock mumbo jumbo that goes on. Um, you know, if anybody does, please indulge me. I really would like to know. It's just not something that I'm that informed about. And I'll be perfectly honest about that. It's been an exciting journey so far. And MoviePass is here to stay. Your endless support, understanding, and enthusiasm are greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mitch Lowe. You're like Mitch below me. Well, that is all very disheartening to say the least. Fuck all. And... It's one of those things also where there's no real warning. It's like, oh, hey, this is going to be up August 15th. Oh, hey, what day is it today? What day is it today? What year? It's August 6th. So you literally gave people nine days. Nine days before you change your service. Not even a full month. And you can't even fix your freaking app. Yeah, I said I was going to wait until the end of the month before deciding whether or not to cancel my service because I was trying to give this some time to work itself out. But in the time since I've made that decision, MoviePass hasn't functioned. MoviePass hasn't worked whatsoever. And now they're like, oh, by the way, you don't even get the month to think about it. We're going to make you make a decision now with a shittier deal. And I'm seriously thinking about just being like, no, fuck you. Cancel. Cancel, cancel. Well, And we, I didn't want to be that person. I've lobbied for this too. I, I've i been one of their greatest advocates. I've told every friend that I know, hey, if you see more than two movies a month, it pays for itself. And technically speaking, with the three three a month plan, it would still pay for itself. But at the same time, when you have service that shitty, and when you change your service on a dime like that, you're not having people faithful in your company because then people essentially go, oh yeah, what's it going to be next month? What, one movie a month? Yeah, nobody trusts your service now for one thing. But for another thing... It was at a point where it was like, yeah, if you see more than two movies a month, it pays for itself. Now it's at a point where it's like, oh yeah, three movies a month. Will I be able to see those three movies with your app? Or am I going to pay you $10 a month for three three movies and pay out of pocket every time I go to the theater anyway? Yeah, because, you know, you get to a certain point, especially when you're with friends, where you want to see a movie, you have your plans, you're at the theater... And you're like, oh, hey, I'm going to pull up MoviePass. But if it doesn't work, you're winding up paying out of pocket or being the person who's like, oh, hey, uh, let, let's do something else. Also, um, it's super fucking embarrassing to have your card declined. Even though it's a MoviePass card and it's not a credit card, it's still fucking embarrassing, especially when you're with a group of people. Yeah, because they, you're holding them up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, yeah, it, it's embarrassing because um, it is a class thing. MoviePass 
was a way for horror people to see movies. Let's face it, that that's the big thing about Movie Pass. Yes, of course, there were rich people who used Movie Pass because they saw it as a great deal, but like it really helped poor people to see movies that they wouldn't have the interest or the courage to see or the the financial stability to see. Mm-hmm. And it really sucks because after seeing how successful some independent films were, I was really excited because I thought that Movie Pass was going to help boom a new independent film movement. I did too. And now it looks like that's all falling apart. Because with three movies a month, you better be damn sure that people aren't going to go see the independent films. The people who stick with your service. Mm -hmm. They're going to go watch Skyscraper. They're going to go watch, you know, Christopher Robin and Mission Impossible. Because that's all they can watch. And that's all they'll choose to watch. Because if, yeah, if you're with a large group of people, those are the type of movies that there's less conflict about. To be perfectly honest. And now that being said, there are some alternatives to movie pass. Cinemia is one that I've become familiar with recently. I mean, I've always kind of known about them, but like their plan was, you know, never as good as movie pass, though. It's kind of close right now. Right now, their classic plan is... $3.99 $3.99 a month for one movie, any theater, no blackout days, watch any movie, but uh, the type of movie is restricted to like 2D screens only. For $7.99 a month, you can see two movies a month and you can, there's no blackout days. Uh, and with their elite plan, it's $9.99 a month, which includes 3D and 4DX movies. And with their other elite plan, you can see three movies a month for $14.99. That includes 3D and 4DX movies. So for five bucks more, you can get essentially the premium movie pass with Cinemia, the elite program. If you haven't gotten a service and you're looking between those two, I would say that Cinemia is actually a better deal because then you can actually see 3D movies, which is one of the things like I don't really care about like Dolby and, um, you know, 3D like Dolby is really nice. But like, you know, I it's not going to sell me on a movie and like 3D movies unless it's like Avatar or um, like How to Train Your Dragon or something like that. You know, the 3D isn't going to sell me, but it's a better deal like there, there are more options to choose from and that, you know, you're not going to have that like blacked out thing like, oh, this premium screening is not supported by MoviePass, which, you know, does MoviePass give you any assurance that that's not going to be the case with their app, you know, outside of it not freaking working? Yeah, um, that, that email failed to address the fact that they just have not been functional for about two weeks. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that you need to apologize about. You need to apologize, hey, on at least on your frickin' Twitter, but, like, since it's been an ongoing problem, you need to address to your customers and tell them what the frick's up. What the frick's up. (laughs) All right. And the the final plan, uh, right now I don't know what the Alamo plan is. Alamo Drafthouse is actually implementing their own plan, but they're testing it out in New York. And figuring out what they're going to do afterwards, which I think is like bullshit because they should test out in Austin where it started. (laughs) All right. So AMC right now has the hands down best deal out of all of them right now. You know, after (laughs) this month, you know, essentially. And that is you can see up to three movies every week, not every month uh, in IMAX, Dolby Cinema and Real D 3D for $19.95 a month. And um, from my understanding, there's also like uh, some discount with uh, popcorn and stuff too. Like a 20% discount with popcorn. 
Oh, sorry, 10% discount. You know, it's not 20, but like 10% discount. That uh, essentially waives the tax. Yeah, and priority lanes and all that kind of stuff. Like, quite frankly, like, yeah, I'm I'm not a huge fan of AMC because like it's only the major movies. Yeah, some some AMCs might have stuff like Pot and the and um you know, some independent fil- uh, films, but, like... It really depends on the yeah, location. Yeah, it does, because, you know, AMC usually promotes the biggest movies out there. And, you know, if all you care about is watching whatever Marvel pumps out or, you know, that kind of thing, then, you know, that's a theater that, you know, provides a good service for you, but... You know, if you're like us and you want to see like documentaries and independent films and stuff like that, AMC is not the greatest option for that. And one of the things that I liked about Movie Pass it was that it was not tied to an individual theater. That you could go to other theaters and like kind of, you know, see what other movie theaters are like, take the risk, you know, go out and, you know, explore like other theaters and stuff like that and it just was a little bit better. I'm looking at uh, what Twitter's saying about Movie Pass right now. Many people are trying to offer tips and encouragement for how to dispute charges for your subscription and essentially just call your bank and dispute it because at this point, people have paid $10 for nothing. Somebody said four subscriptions at nine ninety five a month I don't see what the issue is. It's your consumer right to dispute movie pass for services not received. How about you pay me nine ninety five for nothing? Somebody else said, got my movie pass money back in two hours. You call up or email your bank to dispute for services not received. I did mine online in a few minutes. They sold me on unlimited, any theater, any movie, any time. But the theater shows nothing. Yeah, and we have somebody that we recommended movie pass to, and they still haven't been able to use it. Mm-hmm. Man, this is clueless. It's as if movie passing subscribers are in this for the disruption or whatever bullshit gets Silicon Valley tech bros out of bed in the morning. Movie Pass, this new move is a deal breaker and makes AMC's option measurably better. Three movies a month. Count me out as soon as that takes effect. You could offer AMC's product and win just based on the larger venue offerings, but this product is worthless. Heard AMC theaters jumped on board the movie subscription chain, twice the price for a fourth the theater network, and 60% fewer movies. Thanks for making us look good, AMC. Someone said, hi, Movie Pass. Guess you'll need to update your earlier tweet to reflect this, these recent developments. AMC's plan now offers 400% more movies for twice the price at a fourth of the network theaters. <laughs> this is some garbage. Yeah. I, I'm really frustrated, and uh, I'm curious what you guys think. So put your comments in below. Um, I'm going to collect as many as I can um, and sort of make another uh, podcast slash video about it um, just to uh, kind of see what our viewers are thinking. I, I would go to like Twitter and Reddit, but I, I would prefer to have you know our community speaking out about it. Real quick before we log off, this is a really great point. Um, the only reasons to hate the new movie pass deal are A. You're sick of the constant changes. B. You're somebody who could actually use a movie a day or multiple movies per week. And we have. C. They continue to restrict major movies opening weekends. The last point not clear in the email. So originally before this, they said that they were restricting not just opening weekend, they were restricting entire big blockbuster movies. Any movie that was in more than 1,000 screens essentially was what they were saying. Right, and in that entire letter, they didn't reference whether or not that's staying or going. They didn't reference that in terms of, the things we found out our consumers love that we're going to keep but not really tiki section, or the, well, we found out that our subscribers don't really like this because it doesn't function, and we were just dicks for trying it out at all section so what's happening with that now i mean they they did have a three movies a month plan earlier that they tried to implement with um what was it uh iheart radio 
And they were like, you get three free months of iHeartRadio and you get three movies a month with MoviePass 995. And people were like, fuck that. Mm -hmm. And nobody got it. And then they were like, okay, well, um, you know, we're not going to do that anymore. We're, we're bringing back the 995 per month and you can see unlimited movies, uh, you know, w restricted to one movie a day and, you know, only 2D screens. One of the downsides of MoviePass, even when it was great, was uh, depending on what theater you went to, um, you still ran the risk of possibly not seeing the show because, you know, you got to show up to a movie early. But what I did like about MoviePass was so long as you were at the theater, you could reserve tickets. You know, oftentimes I would like come in like really early in the day and be like, hey, I'm going to get one for Star Wars and then come like four hours later. I, I also want to bring this up. Somebody said literally 21 movie theaters in my area in Las Vegas supported on the movie theater app and every theater has no screenings. No, yeah, I'm like that's the biggest problem, and I I hear a lot of people saying like, oh, what are you complaining about? You're still getting three free movies and a discount afterwards. It's still a good deal, not when it doesn't fucking work. Yeah, and it hasn't been working for day. I mean, for a couple weeks now. And I don't want that to get lost in the hubbub. Like at this point. They're trying to fix some, like, they're trying to be like, oh, but we're going to change our plan. And it's like, are you going to change your service? Are you actually going to function again? So Matt Neglia from The Next Best Picture Show, a podcast that I like listening to, posted on Twitter this. Three movies a month for $9.95. No more surge pricing. No more film restrictions. No more photos of your stub. Additional films per month will result oh, in yeah. a 2 to $5 discount. If purchased through MoviePass. In other words, shut the hell up. This is still a great deal. Hashtag MoviePass. Yeah, that's literally the one I was looking at. I didn't even realize that that was the next best picture. And my response but, to him okay, was, well, what hey. a bourgeoisie thing to say. I'm sorry, not all of us can afford to go to the movies frequently. This is seriously going to hurt independent films in the immediate future. Well, the other thing, too, is that he said no more film restrictions, but like I said, I'm not sure that's, that's true. Yeah, they, they didn't explicitly say that in the email, and I think they did that on purpose because I think they are going to make restrictions. Because I, I think what they are trying to do right now is to see how much they can get away with and still have subscribers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is this the straw that breaks the camel's back? Somebody else commented to that Twitter and said, you have faith that they won't change the rules five more times in the next two months? And he replied, I'm optimistic. And they said, you haven't followed MoviePass very long. And I know that some people talked about the abuse of MoviePass. And I read somewhere that um, MoviePass is going to, um, you know, crack down on scalping because uh, that was a thing. And, you know, we even had some people talk about it and you know, our podcast, but like, I don't really see that as like a huge problem. Yeah. You know, it is shady to, you know, essentially get a 995 service and then, you know, make a profit off of that individually. Also, but, um, it seems as though film slash, um, is saying that even if you have an annual subscription, it's going to suck. The good news is if you're already on an annual subscription plan, then you'll still be able to use MoviePass as it was originally advertised. This means you will still have to deal with the surge pricing, limited movie availability, and all the other nonsense MoviePass has forced on their customers. So if you go month to month and you want to continue MoviePass, you're going to be cut to three movies a month if it even functions at all. Or if you're an annual member, then you still have to deal with search pricing and movie limitations if it even functions at all. I am seriously going to keep MoviePass for two more months. Like I said, two more months because given the fact that they've changed their shit so many times, I'm just crossing my fingers that some big investor is like, hey... <laughs> You know, let, let's fix movie pass. I know somebody asked Elon Musk and that was like a big joke because like Elon Musk was like, no, I can't fix movie pass. But 
Okay, so Matt Neglia posted a picture. I don't know what this is from or what source they're citing, but it says, after one week of analyzing customer responses and internal debate, Mr. Lowe said MoviePass is abandoning those changes. The price increase and restrictions on new releases are being revoked. Is it last week that this was going to be the case for the foreseeable future? Is the foreseeable future like the next two hours? What does that even mean? Okay, the price increase and restriction on new releases are being revoked. There will be no surcharges and users will no longer have to upload photos of tickets they buy to prove they're not committing fraud. Of course, they didn't really say that, so I don't know. MoviePass themselves didn't say that in their email, so I don't know about that. Um, let me double check, because... Oh, somebody said the email sent by MoviePass clearly says there will still be restrictions on blockbuster films. Uh, no, it said we will be suspending. It didn't say they'd be getting away with it, but they said we will be suspending peak pricing and ticket verification requirements for all members in the new plan. Okay, so... The so that still isn't talking about right. limiting the films that you're allowed to see with it. Yeah. They just didn't say it. Yeah, the, there is nowhere in there where it says that they would restrict films, but there's nowhere there where they it's say they, they won't, won't. So who knows? Somebody said, for anyone who doesn't go to the movies that frequently, it's it's an okay deal. Like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, but MoviePass wasn't sold to your grandma who, you know, decides to go to the movie you know, after playing bingo, you know, one Thursday night, three times a week, uh, you know, three times a month. Well, that's the thing, too. Even if it is the granny who likes to go to the movies after playing bingo in your very weird, bizarre, hypothetical <laughs> character, um, once a week, that's still only covering three-fourths of the time that they go. So, like, okay, let's do some math real quick. In that case, you're paying $10. Movie tickets are about $12, so that's... Okay, so you'd be spending about $48 on movie tickets. Let's say you go to one movie a week, $48. So, um, with Movie Pass, you pay your original $10, and then you get a $5 discount on that last movie. Um, so that's going to be $7. So... And if you're at a theater... You're really only saving $31 a month, which, I mean, that's not nothing. That's not negligible, but that's still the case where it's like, oh, hey, you get three free movies, and then after that, you still have to pay 7 or $8 per movie ticket. Yeah, because let's that's face it... That's still a pay-as-you-go membership. That's yeah. That's still and... not the point of movie pass. Yeah, like, and... I understand that they're struggling right now financially, but I could even understand them saying, hey, for the next two months, we have to do this in order to sustain our business. It would suck and it would make people angry, but it would, you know, say, oh, we do this. And then if we make this, then we can go back to what movie pass was. That's not what they're saying. No, that's not what they're saying. But, like, even if they raise their subscription from $10 to $12, that granny who only sees four movies a month is still going to be saving more money than with this current plan. And quite frankly, um, it is going to make people make less purchases at the movie theater, you know, such as, like, concessions and beer and all that kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. people are going to be like, well, you know, I originally had this much money when I went to the movies, but now that, you know, it's only slightly better than paying the theater, you know, I, I don't know if I can justify getting a popcorn or that. So theaters are going to hurt because of this as well. And, you know, I think some of the movie past cynics, you know, some of the people were just like, it's going to fail, it's going to fail, it's going to fail, um, you know, are not realizing is that, you know, it did actually help several theaters, you know, especially the Brew and Beagle type theaters, because people were buying more alcohol, people were buying more food because, you know, they didn't have to worry about the ticket. 
It is funny to me how all these people are like, oh yeah, why do all these people feel entitled to the way things used to be? Why do they feel entitled to this old deal? And it's like, because that's what we signed up for. Yeah, you, It's you not signed- entitlement. This is what you said your service was. If you're living in an apartment, you're living in like a one bedroom apartment by yourself and you've signed a lease with your landlord and you pay your landlord a certain amount of money every month in order to have your apartment and you might not be at your apartment all the time, but it's there whenever you need it. And there are certain things you can't do because you don't own it, but it's yours whenever you need it. You pay your landlord and that's what you agreed upon in your lease. And your landlord comes over and is like, hey, by the way, I'm going to change our deal. You're not allowed to have your own bedroom and bathroom anymore. You could still have your living room, which would be a nice studio space, and it's still going to cost you the same amount every month. But that's not what you signed up to when you moved in. Your landlord doesn't have the right to like come in and take away your bedroom and your bathroom from your one-bedroom apartment and-, and tell you, and by the way... Uh, you should be so grateful that you can still live in your living room for the exact same cost as you were paying to have your bedroom and your bathroom as well. You wouldn't, somebody would come up to you and be like, well, why did you feel so entitled to your one bedroom and your bathroom as well? Um, because that's what I signed up for. That was the agreement that I put my name on and that's what I've been paying every month. And yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm not home five days out of the week and I'm only home on the weekend, but my landlord doesn't have the right to come up to me and be like, by the way, you're only here on the weekends anyway, so it doesn't matter. You don't need that. That's bullshit. Like, I, obviously that's extreme, but that's the same, that's the same concept. Yeah, it, it's just really infuriating. And I do understand the class action lawsuit. I also know that movie passes defenses If you read the terms of service, which I actually, when I signed up for MoviePass, read the whole damn thing because, you know, I was pretty sure that this was an offer that was too good to be true. So I read the whole thing. And yes, it did say that, you know, we have the right to change our service at any time. And you sign that and that is their defense. I'm not sure how legal that actually is to basically say you know, somewhere in their contract that we can change it at any time and, you know, they can legally get away with, you know, essentially advertising that and like, hey, you know, in this small fine line uh, that, you know, we have something else. They they could get away with that and I can see the class action lawsuit getting overturned because of that one stipulation. That being said, still false advertisement. And... Changing your service dramatically in one month without informing your consumers is the worst business choice you can make because you have people canceling MoviePass in droves and then you have people that can't even cancel their MoviePass subscription because like, you know, for some reason the app doesn't work for that either. Interestingly enough, MoviePass is a wonderful idea. And I wanted to see it survive, and it doesn't look like it's going to. The plus side is other companies have seen the model, and they're adapting to it. But then movie theaters become more like cable service instead of something different. Well, here's the other thing. In terms of the legality of changing its terms and conditions, I'm pretty sure that it's not legal, even if you write that in your terms and service, You can't change your terms and service at any time without giving consumers proper notice. And that most definitely has not been happening already. Also, changing your terms of service in nine days? What? Well, you got got a notice. I am also a a consumer, and I got no notice from MoviePass that they're planning on implementing these changes. We definitely didn't get any notice that they were going to offer surge pricing. That didn't fucking happen. We definitely didn't get any notice that, oh, by the way, you know, MoviePass just isn't going to work at all anywhere for two weeks. That definitely didn't happen. And you could probably do a class action lawsuit based on all of the refunds that were promised and never given. Because when a company sends me a notice saying, hey, we had an out 
footage, send us proof that you went to a movie during that time and we'll reimburse you. And I do that. And then they say four weeks later, uh, no reimbursement for you. No explanation given. Yeah. Okay. So I'm on the movie pass app right now. It's 942. And for every theater except the Flicks Brew House, which is an e-ticketing theater, it says that there are no more movies showing today. I know for damn sure that that isn't the case. Well, I also checked it about an hour ago and it said the same thing. I checked it about four hours ago and it said that there were screenings in almost every movie theater between 9.20 and 10.30. And they haven't addressed this at all. And it's incredibly frustrating because this is the biggest problem outside of everything else is the fucking app not working. Mm -hmm. So what are you even paying for? Because, you know, at a certain point, you know, because let's face it, some people don't live near a theater. So they drive all the way out to see the movie with Movie Pass and then find out that they can't see the movie with Movie Pass because the app isn't working. What? Are you going to start paying gas money? Fuck no, they're not. So putting it this way, an agreement does not give the consumer the power. A contract agreement does not give the company the power to bind its customers to unknown future contract terms because consumers cannot assent to terms that do not yet exist. That's the legal reason of you can't just change it at any time with no notice. So... And that definitely happened with that search pricing bullshit. So I'm just saying there, there are some legal grounds here. It's not just completely for not. Yeah... I mean, that being said, I'm not a lawyer and I I don't know all the stipulations because, I I mean, you know, state by state, things can be different. Yeah, but like, it's it's weird the kinds of bullshit that like companies can get away with, you know, in the legal system. And I I think that, you know, MoviePass could find a way to wiggle out of paying things because then they can argue, oh, well, we were a service that provided... Well, they'll you know, just go like, bankrupt, and then yeah. they won't have to do that. Exactly. I Yeah, that that's the thing. And I think what they're trying to do, and a lot of other people see this, is they're trying to screw over the customers so much so that they actually make a little bit of profit before they go bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Which is really shitty. Well, the thing is, is I'm pretty sure that when you file for bankruptcy, you actually do get money to do with uh, as you please. It's, it's so the finally 1% for, benefit. It is the 1% benefit. So, like, you could file for bankruptcy, which says, hey, we don't have enough money to pay all of these people back for all of these reimbursements, get a bailout from the bank, and then just use that to give everyone a nice big bonus before your company goes under. But also without having to give your employees their severance pay. So, we're going to see what happens in the next couple weeks, months with MoviePass. And it will be really interesting to see what comes of this. I don't know. They might back out of this and re-implement their original plan after enough outcry about it and, you know, actually get money from financiers that want to see the model succeed. You know, you get a couple billionaires throw some money at it. You know, the company could sustain itself. But what kind of investors actually want to invest in a company with this poor customer service and um, (laughs) for an app that, you know, hasn't worked properly for going on three weeks now. Somebody put this really well. They said, it's a horrible move. That's like saying you're only allowed to pick three dishes at a buffet. So let us know what you guys think about MoviePass. I'm going to be making... One that's just a response. So if you want to give your two cents, talk about your experience, tell some horror stories, tell some good stories. Uh, You know, I I want to include some positives and some negatives, uh, you know, to kind of balance it out a little bit. As of four hours ago, somebody said, no more film restrictions may not be true. Check their up dated frequently asked questions an exact quote the new plan will include many major studio first run films however there will be some exceptions yeah so there you have it um and then somebody else said i would consider this a great deal if they would let me watch movies yeah yeah right 
Um, so let us know what you think. And uh, as always, thanks for listening and keep believing.